In this video, we're going to talk about how to put trusses on top of a shipping container. Now, we've already started talking about this subject. In this episode, we're going to talk about putting the trusses against the shipping container using a product called domino clamps. Now, you might remember from a previous episode where we put two 40-foot shipping containers together side by side, and we put this plate in between them to kind of hold them together. And then we put these clip angles on top of that plate. And that is so that we can support the middle of the wood trusses in the middle of the combined shipping container. Now on the corner casting of a shipping container, there are these holes. And those holes are what domino clamps have designed their device to hold into. Very much like the corner casting clamps that are made when shipping containers are stacked on top of each other and also side by side. Now there's an insert inside of the hollow of the corner casting and then there is a plate that is screwed into that corner casting and it clamps it together to where um, it doesn't require you to actually connect these trusses or the things supporting the trusses with any connections that's going to penetrate through the shipping container. Because as we know, when we penetrate through a shipping container, it's not gonna be watertight. And they also have a secondary element, which is a bent metal clamp type of thing. And in on that clamp, they have these uh, holes on the top and holes on one hole on the bottom. And that way they clamp on to the side rail of the top side rail of the shipping container. It seems to me that you're going to need to use a lock washer for this because as you'll see as we go on further with this, once the uh, other elements are there for the trusses to be connected to upon, you're not going to be able to get to these clamps too well. It's going to be all contained and so you need to make sure these clamps are as tight as they possibly can and they are not going to uh, unscrew and loosen up in the years to come. Now that you have these clamps and the domino clamps and these other secondary clamps in place, then we can bolt a nailer all the way down the shipping container. And I'm showing a two by six as a nailer and bolting it into that black item on the corner casting and it has four holes on that domino clamps where you can actually connect anything in there um, for example you can put a maybe a, a pole through and that pole might hold a light but in this case this is bolting this two by six and the two by six is also bolted onto the secondary members all the way along the uh, shipping container side and Simpson comes up with connectors too, a company named Simpson. And I'm going to give you links to all this down below. So be sure to check that out. And I'm choosing this one that's configured this way uh, so that these can be screwed into this nailer all the way down the way. So now we've got the nailer and all of the items that we need in order to bring those trusses into place. And we're putting them into the center clip angle and also into the Simpson tie in the, on the nailer on the side. In the eave, we can get a little bit of a glimpse about how it looks looking up at it. The nailer, the bolts into the secondary member, the Simpson tie, the trusses being cradled with that Simpson tie. And then we can start with uh, InsoFast. And InsoFast is the styrofoam uh, system that actually adheres to the outside of the corrugated part of the shipping container so that you don't penetrate through the side walls by screwing anything. If we're going to be putting siding, which is on this example, then this actually works out well. And these InsoFast ribs here have got a nailer surface and that's what that black stripe is, is something that will be able to receive a nail or screws that the siding will need in order to attach it to the side of the building. And these 
Insofast can tuck behind the nailer. And there's the uh, secondary piece as well. You can see how it's clamped onto that center of uh, that top railing. And then we can put Insofast insulation in between the flutes of the shipping container, corrugated walls. And then maybe another layer to be able to push out the siding a little bit so that we can create ourselves a rain screen. And this gives us a space between the back of the shipping container, I'm sorry, the back of the siding and the outside face of the insulation. And that allows for condensation and rainwater and water, whatever moisture to go down the outside face of the insulation and get away from your building. Then we can put siding right up against this nailer. And then we can put our uh, soft soffit on the top and the soffit and trim and it has an eave vent. And then a gutter flashing. Insulation in between the rafters, be sure to have those at insulation below the top of the trusses so that air will be allowed to run up the, the vent on the um, soffit and above the insulation and it'll find its way out in a ridge vent. Then we can put our sheathing on top of that. And then we can put our uh, shingles on top of the sheathing. I'm showing a zip sheathing system. That's the green. And this is what it looks like on the back side. With all the trusses in place. So let me know what you think about this domino clamp item. You know, it has some advantages because it's not going to penetrate through the shipping container, but it's using the strength of the bolts to hold all of your trusses in place. And with wind loads and all kinds of other lateral loads throughout the years that your shipping container home might have to go through, um, you need to be careful that these fasteners that are used to Bolt these domino clamps onto the shipping container will last for a whole lifetime. We'll talk to you on the next video.